an outside independent research firm to develop, deploy, and analyze the survey for us. You can find the survey report from Triad Research on our website to view in detail, including demographic breakdowns like parents or non-parents. But today I will share a few slides and let everyone know how we are moving forward with this valuable input from our community. To start off, we ran the survey for about three weeks in late April and early May. We were fortunate enough to receive 2,066 responses to the survey, which is two and a half times more responses than we received on the last community survey. The experts at Triad told us that they are happy when the surveys they deploy have a margin of error of plus or minus 5%. With the number of responses we received, the margin of error was plus or minus 2.2%. So this was a very valid survey. Jumping into the results now, the first question on the survey was, how would you rate the quality of education provided by winter schools? We are pleased that this received a favorable response with 81% saying good or excellent, while 17% said fair or poor, and 2% were unsure. A big part of what we believe contributes to providing the high quality education that children in our community need is to offer an array of opportunities so that we are ensuring a well-rounded educational experience. So we asked how would you rate better schools when it comes to offering a well-rounded and balanced curriculum, including relevant electives, extracurricular activities, academic and social clubs, etc. Again, there was a favorable, favorable response here as 78% said excellent or good, with 17% saying fair or poor, and 6% unsure. In regards to school safety, we asked the question, how would you rate better schools when it comes to providing a safe learning environment? 63% of respondents said good or excellent, 34% said fair or poor, and 3% are not sure. More specifically, we asked everyone to please indicate the extent to which you favor or oppose Mentor Public Schools investing in each of the following. Some of those things that uh, we uncovered here were that 86% favor installing security vestibules where needed, 83% favor hiring additional security or school resource officers, uh, which again, we are very hopeful that this will be happening in the next couple of weeks uh, as we continue our conversations with the city on contract that we discussed with our school safety committee uh, board representatives here in early June. We also had 64% say they were in favor of creating single stall restrooms for student privacy. One area of school safety in which we see significant room for improvement is in our approach to student discipline. Only 35% responded favorably, while 52% indicated a fair or poor rating, and 12% were not sure. This is something that uh, we are committed to continue working on as a team. I met with our middle school and high school administrators right after school let out in early June to start discussing the data surrounding our, school, our student discipline incidents for this school year. We're looking closely at how we can improve many of the mean behavior incidents we see in our schools and are creating plans to do the following. Number one, how do we code each of the incidents in our system to accurately capture whether it is a major or minor incident? Does it fit the state definitions of bullying, harassment, and intimidation? Or does it need to be classified as a different type of mean behavior? By completing this work, we will be able to clear up some of the confusion around the bullying incidents that get reported to the state and that are posted on our website. As a reminder, we have started to not just post the required bullying data on our website, but we are now sharing data on all of the mean behaviors we see in the district during the school year. Second thing that we're looking closely at is what consequences we've been giving in past uh, in the past for different incident types and we are seeing improvements and where we are seeing improvements in future behaviors. As I've said before, we cannot suspend or expel our way out of this problem, but we need to make sure that our consequences fit the type of incident and have plans in place to help the student modify 
their behavior. We are also looking closely at what programs and supports we currently have in place to learn about and promote positive behaviors. We need to look at our advisory periods, our transition programs from 5th to 6th grade and 8th to ninth grade, and the resources we bring in from our educational service centers, Crossroads, and Signature Health to make sure that they are addressing our students' needs. And finally, we need to look at what programs do we need to develop to help address some of the student discipline. One of the arguments that I often hear is that a student may have had a major incident and got suspended for a couple of days, but then they are right back in the school building and in the classrooms, and it does not seem like they were disciplined appropriately. People also say that by suspending a student out of school for a couple of days, we're just giving them some time off, and that's really what they wanted anyway. What I would like to see is the creation of some programs that might be in addition to the suspension, where we can bring them into an alternative setting immediately following the suspension to make sure that they stay current with their coursework, but then to also have some of the mental health, behavior, and counseling support that they need before they re-enter the large comprehensive middle school or high school buildings that we have here in Manor. Our building administrative teams will continue working on this over the next several weeks as we get ready to start the 24-25 school year. I will also continue to provide updates on our work around student discipline over the next couple of months of board meetings. Another topic covered in the survey related to the controversy surrounding media center materials asking how would you describe your level of concern regarding the appropriateness of books and materials available in the library media center? 25% expressed they are concerned or very concerned, while 75% expressed no concern, low concern, or were unsure. With the policies being voted upon this evening and the corresponding administrative guidelines, Parents will have complete control over the library media center materials their students will be able to access. Additionally, any future book challenges that have not already been reviewed will run through a committee that would be selected from our superintendent, our director of curriculum, one of whom would be serving as a chairperson for the committee, our curriculum specialist, the building principal, the media specialist, teachers from that particular grade band, and any others deemed necessary by the chairperson of that committee. Another set of questions asked respondents to rate the importance they would place on various topics, and then to rate how well the district is performing in those areas. What we saw in the responses are very high levels of agreement that these topics are important, but also that we have room for growth in our performance around these topics. Here are some of those data points. 91% of respondents said it's important for mentor schools to, quote, help students become good global citizens, end quote. 88% said it's important that we, quote, develop and implement programs that address the social and emotional needs of students. 86% said it's important that we prepare students to navigate a culturally diverse world. And 91% said it's important to balance the use of digital media or screen time in the classroom versus more traditional paper and pencil type instruction. As I mentioned, the ratings for our performance in addressing these topics were lower, kind of in the mid to upper 40% ranges. So we will be looking at ways to improve in these areas throughout the year. Seventy-six percent of those who took the survey responded favorably that the district is doing a good job keeping you informed. However, only 58 percent of people said that they were aware that the Ohio Department of Education awarded Mentor Public Schools an overall rating of 4.5 out of 5 stars on our latest state report card. And only 47 percent of respondents were aware that Mentor residents paid the third lowest property taxes in Lake County. Those are definitely two facts worth sharing more because Mentor Schools is a good return on your investment and one of the top three academic performing districts in Lake County with the third lowest property taxes. 
The survey showed agreement there as well. 70% of respondents said that Mentor Public Schools provides a good return on your investment, while only 16% disagreed and 14% weren't sure. There are many other questions on the survey that I've not gone over here, and again, all of that information is posted on our website for you to view in detail. Now I would encourage you to do so. I do want to take this opportunity to thank everyone who took the time to offer their feedback. It's been a valuable piece of information for us administratively as we move through the strategic planning process. We will present our updated strategic plan to the community at our August meeting. We will see that many of the ideas and areas of improvement coming out of the community survey will be included, included in some of the big moves of our strategic plan. As always, we will focus on working together to provide the best educational experience possible for our students. Mr. Heath, can I ask a question sure. about the survey? Uh, how did Triad Research verify the residency of the respondents to the survey? They do a lot of that through IP address 